Let's go to business now. Giles Beckford is standing very by. Giles, another day, another business confidence survey. I stand very by to be wowed by the results. What would our lives be without them? That's all I could say. This one is from the Institute of Economic Research. It's one of the more closely regarded, better regarded surveys, but it shows that sentiment's fallen to the weakest level in 10 years. Uh, that's the headline level. And also for firms' view of their own prospects, their own outlook, that's down to the lowest level since uh, early 2009. It would seem the main reason this time, it's not for the local government, which is normally regarded as the main culprit, but in fact the uh, worsening global outlook, those dark clouds, those rather gloomy predictions we keep hearing about the world economy slowing, trade wars and the like and the effect that that will have. So that's uh, making manufacturers in particular glum, but it's uh, right through the rest of the business community. Businesses are uh, finding that their profits are being squeezed, that sales are slowing, uh, they're not hiring people like they used to. Uh, all in all, um, they're, they're getting a bit lean, perhaps a little bit mean, uh, perhaps getting into shape where they uh, will be able to withstand something that's significantly worse if it were to occur. Now, the uh, NZIR says that on the basis of this survey, they're thinking the economy will slow to perhaps below 2% annual growth in the second half of this year. And we're growing just around 2.5% at the moment on an annual basis. So it wouldn't take too much for us to dip down to that level. Uh, for many, of course, this is another reason why the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will want to cut interest rates, possibly as soon as next month, but certainly by the end of the year. And just to... Uh, uh, add a little bit of spice to it. Christina Leung, who is the principal economist at the NZDI, says that probably a rate cut isn't needed. It doesn't have much effect in perking up the economy. But in the game of global interest rates and global currencies, probably the RBNZ cannot afford uh, not to cut. In other words, if it leaves interest rates unchanged, that will see the New Zealand dollar rise because our rates will be higher than most other parts of the world. The funny money, the speculative money will flow in here and will boost the value of the currency. Bad for exporters. And another reason why the RBNZ may feel it needs to cut next month, the Reserve Bank of Australia in the past hour has just cut its cash rate to a record low 1%. Once it goes below 1%, one starts to wonder where they are. They'll be in uh, uncharted territory. 1%. And of course, you, you will remember that after the global financial crisis, yeah. there were parts of the world where, in fact, you were having to pay the bank to keep your money in their vaults, not the other way around as it was supposed to be. In other words, they were trying to give you every reason not to store your money, but in fact to invest it. Of course, a lot of people speculated on that, and uh, that's why share markets are probably as strong as they are today. Mm, interesting. Hey, what's going on with the Westland Dairy Cooperative? There's, there's a last-minute bid to upset its sale, and, and the this sale is, was to be a Chinese to a Chinese company, wasn't it? It is. It will go to a vote of the shareholders on Thursday. The Chinese state-owned company Yili. It's one of the biggest dairy companies in the world. It's been on a quiet acquisition trail and expansion trail uh, in the past few years. It already has plants here in New Zealand and operates here locally. Firms such as Yili look for processing capacity, sources of dairy product, which they can actually make up and send back to China. They're not worrying too much about supplying the New Zealand market or anywhere else in the world. Western Cooperative really has been a basket case. Um, it's been uh, financially strapped for years, and this uh, $588 million proposed sale will be the saviour of it. It has been lagging in its payments to farmers, uh, the, the level of payments to farmers, well behind Fonterra, the likes of Sinlay and Tartua. So a sale on Thursday looks like it will be it will be approved by somewhat desperate shareholders. But there's a small group of shareholders, or in fact former shareholders, who say, look, we're owed $11 million. And under cooperative rules, you get paid a certain amount for your shares when you depart. Uh, there's a five-year delay possibility that, that, that they could delay that, uh, that payout. And that was designed when the cooperative was in its heyday to stop a run on the cooperative, everybody getting out and asking for their money back, and that would put pressure on the finances. But come Thursday, it may be that Westland isn't a cooperative anymore. It's a Chinese-owned company. And these uh, shareholders are saying, we're owed $11 million. Why can't we get it back? Westland doesn't want to play ball. Yili doesn't want to play ball. So they're going to the overseas investment office, who have to approve the sale, saying, oi, 
look out for Kiwis first. We may not have uh, too much money in the game, but $11 million is $11 million, and it's owed to us. Can we get some satisfaction first? We'll wait to see if they have any uh, impact on that. OK, Giles, let's do a quick bolt around the market, shall we? Oh, look, another day, another record close for the share market. It's up 67 points. It's about two-thirds of a percent, 10,531. And the New Zealand dollar sitting quite comfortably at 66.7 US, 95.6 Australian and 52.8 British pence. Thanks, Giles. Giles Beckford there with our business wrap this evening.